Hello everyone, this is Dr. Henchman, and welcome back to Survival Commander. So last episode we were working on our magnetizer, uh, and I've gotten my magnetic um, iron leggings there from that, um, but we didn't really get to, to do much else. We had to do a lot of explaining, introducing uh, you all to what Survival Commander is all about. Uh, so hopefully the the uh, magnetized machine kind of showed a little bit, um, but we have I have two contraptions this episode, which I think will really start to show um, what is what we're capable of doing uh, with command blocks. Um, and I was kind of working through what is the next thing and uh, to work on, and uh, there was two aspects. Food is one of them. I don't want to be eating bread anymore. I, I, I'm running so low on food. This is all the food that I have. I really would like to get some uh, cows bred up and, and so that I can eat some steaks. So we'll be looking at some command blocks to help us with that. And I also need a better way of getting around. Last episode you would have seen me take uh, quite a while to get over to the Mesa to get uh, materials for command blocks. Uh, I want an easy way to get over there and uh, to anywhere else in the world that we need to get to. Uh, but before we can get to that, we have a bit of a problem. We don't have many command blocks. I've only got four left at the moment uh, and not many materials to craft them. So I'm going to need to start to collect some more materials so that I can make some more command blocks. So that's what I'm going to get started at right with right now. And we're back. So <laughs> it was really hard to feed the cows in that in that camera view. Um, we are in our cow pen, um, just feeding them up the, some of the um, the cows and things. To uh, obviously we need we want to get the meat so that we can use it for food, but we also need the leather. Um, from these cows, I'm, I'm going to stop feeding them now. Um, we also need the leather from it, uh, so that we can get a bunch of books, uh, so we can get a proper enchantment set up, uh, so that we can get some better gear. Um, so we needed some command blocks to help us, uh, with what we'll be doing to, to help us here. I, um, I crafted 36, uh, or 32, um, command blocks, we already had four, so we have 36 now in our inventory. Uh, I also went for a little bit of a fish. Um, we needed the name tag, uh, which I was very lucky to get, but I also got an enchanted book. Silk Touch, Smite 4, and Respiration 3. So I'll have to decide which of those three ones I would like the most. I'm thinking Silk Touch, but once we get the enchantment set up, I guess it might be easier to get Silk Touch. We'll see what we, we'll see what happens. But... Breeding up these cows, it is a it is it is a massive pain. You know, I have to be here, or I have to feed them, I have to wait around, I have to come back and feed them again. It's really time consuming, and I don't particularly want to um, keep a large supply of cows around just so that I can 
always breed up as many as I need. Be great if there was a way that we could breed them while I was not here. So that is what we're going to be making today. We're going to be making a auto feeder. Uh, so the idea is that uh, we could have, say, an armor stand here. Uh, and it will have some, some wheat in its inventory and it will feed the cows that are hungry around the area and make them uh, willing to mate. Uh, and they will then uh, make little babies um, and it will just keep doing that as long as it's got food it will keep uh, feeding them so we can kind of go away we go mining building other things uh, while we've got uh, this here feeding the cows and then we can come back at the end they're all grown up uh, we've got lots of grown-up cows and uh, we can kill them uh, thin the herd and uh, get the leather and meat that we need so I'm going to start to put together some of the command blocks um, and then I'll show you how it all works. All right, we're back. So I have our, our breeder set up in the middle. It's not, not everything is set up, but I wanted to explain uh, how the breeding works. So uh, if we look at a cow, um, it has a couple of... Um, a couple of data attributes about it. So it has its age, which is zero, which is, this is the default age. So if a cow is just a regular adult cow uh, and they haven't bred recently, they have a data, they have an age of zero. Now, they also have another uh, metric, which is in love. Uh, so that this cow currently isn't in love. Now, if I breed this cow and I look at the data value for that, you'll see that there it has an in love value now and this slowly counts down. So eventually you get down to zero, when it's zero, it won't be willing to breed anymore. If I breed another cow near it, uh, they'll obviously be attracted to each other and then they make the baby. And let's have a look at the baby's value. You can see that its age is a negative value. And so it will tick up towards zero um, and when it reaches zero, it will be fully bred up. So we, we can use these data values to detect an adult cow. Uh, so if the adult, if the, the age is zero and the in love is zero, we can use some wheat on it and it will then become willing to breed and it will breed with one of the others. And by using these two data attributes, we can select those and ignore any babies or ones that have already bred and, and, and aren't and feeding it won't do anything. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what we'll do. And yeah, you can see the age of this cow is currently over uh, zero and it will tick down to zero now. When it reaches zero, that's when we know that it is willing to breed again. Now, we have uh, the way that we're going to set up the breeder in the middle. We're going to use the arm stand up here to detect uh, the cows around it. So I'll, I'll search an area around it, uh, maybe like 10 blocks uh, radius around it. Um, for these cows which have an age of zero and an in love of zero and then we'll feed it some wheat when um, uh, when it found, finds such a cow. And the way that we're going to feed it some wheat is oh, we have to put it in the hopper. So we're going to put wheat into uh, this furnace. Uh, I'm using a furnace because the nice thing about a furnace is it has uh, one inventory slot which can accept inventory. Uh, this just makes it a little bit easier to detect where the wheat is, um, how much wheat is in there, and make that sure that we don't um, we don't activate this code when when there's no uh, wheat to use. So we're, we're not going to just like breed cows indefinitely. We'll, we'll need to um, use wheat. So every time it finds a cow nearby, it will use that wheat on that cow, so it will deduct one of the wheat out of there. And so we can put, obviously we have a stack of wheat in here and we can also uh, load up five stacks of wheat. I don't think I'll ever do that. I'll probably only put one stack of wheat in there at a time, just because we don't want an explosion of cows. But the nice thing is once that's set up, um, we don't have to do anything. We can go uh, elsewhere. Uh, so we'll obviously, there's a couple of things that we need to do first. Uh, we need to give the armor stand a name. 
Uh, so I'm going to use breeder. Um, I'm also I could run this in a in a um, a command block. I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to run it in the console. Just I think it will be more convenient <laughs> to run this here. Um, we we can detect it, it um, this armor stand now uh, using uh, using this. Uh, name equals breeder. So if we get that, you can see all the information. We've detected that. Uh, one thing that I am going to do just for convenience um, is say custom name visible. Sure. There we go. So you, you can see that it's a breeder now. Uh, that's the only thing that I'm going to run directly in the console. Everything else will be via the commands. Um, and finally, we obviously need to uh, make our Free to look a little bit uh, nicer than an armor stand. Oh, there we go. Um, I have got a, a player head into the game. Um, I, I figured that a command block for an arm uh, for a player head is a reasonable trade, and we have a farmer now. <laughs> Hopefully, people know who this is. But we have. Uh, have our farmer now. So I am going to go over to the command blocks in the CPU and show you how they work. So we have over here two set, two new sets of command blocks. Uh, this line and this line. I've I've put some. I've built them all up already. I've uh, this line is the breeder feeder. Uh, so this is the thing that finds cows and uh, and feeds them some wheat. And then we have the cow breed cows breed which is uh, it finds cows that um, were identified as to be bred by the breeder um, and it uh, makes them in love and, and, and whatnot. So I'll quickly show you the command blocks here. Oh, one more thing is actually over here. We just have a scoreboard set up. Um, so uh, that just uh, creates a breeder fed and another one uh, breeder food two scoreboards set up that we'll need for this. So, the first thing that we're going to do um, is we're going to detect an arm stand with the name breeder um, and if the block uh, underneath it is a furnace and it has wheat in it, we're going to store how much wheat it has. So we'll store how much wheat is in the breeder um, then, uh, once we have that, uh, we're going to, uh, once we have that, uh, furnace there, we we know how much food is in it. We're going to find breeders which have more than one food in it. Um, and we're going to try and identify a single cow within a five block radius. I might make that 10 actually. Uh, so we'll find a single cow in that uh, in that radius, which has an age of zero and a love of zero, um, and that hasn't previously been fed. And if that if we find such a cow, we're going to add the fed uh, tag to it. Um, so we're just going to do one cow at a time, and we actually store that result into uh, for each of the breeders. We store um, how many cows they fed whether it's zero or one, against that breeder. Uh, we're then going to uh, find for each of those breeders that just fed a cow, we're going to remove one from their food, and we're going to store that back into the furnace. So we'll, we'll go through each of those breeders that have fed one, uh, uh, one food, and we'll store the item count that we now, the new item count that we have um, as the breeder food. Finally, we'll reset the breeder fed and the breeder food uh, scoreboards for all players. Um, we do this just so that uh, we don't have to uh, worry about us reading an old uh, food value. And if we delete the armor stand, it cleans up the scoreboards for us. So that's that part of it. Um, so now we have a whole lot of cows which have the fed 
tag, and that will happen in each tick. So um, it only finds one cow, but you know, next tick it will find another cow um, if there's one in the area. So it shouldn't be a matter that it shouldn't be a problem that it only uh, uses one cow, finds one cow at a time. So here, here we're going to find uh, cows which have the fed tag, and we're going to add 60, uh, 600 ticks of in love to them. This is the same as what happens in game. Um, we have, we also have now, um, for each of those uh, cows, we're going to add, give them heart particles. Um, this is, you know, to indicate that they're in love. Um, strangely, the heart particles don't actually come from the in love uh, flag that we set. They actually come from when you use uh, some wheat on a cow. Um, so we have to emulate what it looks like. So we create some more particles. Uh, finally, we just remove the tag fed from any of the cows that are fed. That means that we don't constantly keep setting the in love uh, score to, to 600. So now what are we gonna do? We're gonna turn both of these on and see if it's working. Um, so I think there was about one baby cow over in the, in the area. There was one, so there should be a few more. There should probably also be some XP. Oh, there you go, see? There's some XP over here as well on the ground. So it definitely has worked. I'm going to just stand outside here. Um, Oh, there you go. There you go. I didn't feed them at all. It worked. You just saw it then. I was going to have to see if I had to wait, but um, it doesn't look like I have to. So we've, we've got some cows breeding. So, um, all right, I'm going to, I am actually going to stand up here uh, for, for a few seconds. Uh, well, for a few minutes, actually. Um, and we'll see what happens, uh, you know, in this, in the meantime here. All right, that mini breeding session went pretty well. You can see I've got a lot of babies here. I actually thinned out the, the number of adults because I needed some leather to finish off the decorations for our breeder. So let's put the last decorations on now. Looking great. Our, bre our breeder is looking amazing. <laughs> All right, so we have our cow breeder going. Um, I. I've fueled it up a little bit. It's got some fuel in it. It burns through the, the wheat very quickly. So <laughs> it uh, is helpful. It means I can do other things, but it doesn't uh, mean that we're going to have an explosion of meat anytime soon. We have a little bit. I have some cooking in the furnace over there. But I thought we'd get to the next part of explaining uh, the second contraption, the way that we're going to be getting around. So um, in ZF's original uh, Survival Commander series, he made use of um, armor stands um, as a way of uh, getting around. So he used them for teleporters. So um, he, what he would do is he would have, say, uh, you know, two armor stands, and it would have a special name, and you'd have a command block under one of them. And when he stepped on that command block, um, it would it would take him to. Uh, it would say like this would be the uh, cave. Uh, teleporter and he would click on that and it would immediately teleport him to the cave uh, teleport pad like uh, re you know, re uh, receiving pad and then we'd have to have a returning pad and you'd always have to go back to that same one so it was only ever one directional so you'd only have a this uh, you know, pressure pad would go to that teleporter and this one would go to there so we'd have to have more as he added you know more locations he wanted to get to I thought that I would use um armor stands uh, for teleporters, um, but I'd use it in a slightly different way. So I, what I wanted to have was a multi-channel one, one where I could go onto a teleporting pad and choose the location that I go to. Um, so I went through different options of how to choose a teleporter, and I came up uh, with a, a very neat way of doing it. So um, 
I was looking at the different uh, data values that you get out of the player. Uh, so S is the current player. And I found a very interesting one, selected item slot. You see that that value is now zero. I've got my sword on my help bar. If I select my uh, bow, for example, you'll see that that data value is three. Uh, so I'm actually able to detect which item slot I'm holding. So if we go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's zero through eight. Um, so I can have, I can have nine and use each of those zero to eight channel um, to go uh, to nine different locations. And I can select um, the location just by holding that item slot and going over the pressure uh, pad at one of the teleporters and it would take me to another teleporter. And so I could just have the teleporter unit be able to be both the sending and receiving at each of those nine locations. Uh, so I am going to build up uh, two of those locations now uh, so I can show you how it works. I'll build up uh, the one, I'll build up one for this area here and I'll build up one for the CPU over there. All right, we have something built up here. So I built up the module just here um, and over in the CPU um, and I'll talk you through how it works. So, uh, so we have this lever here it's going to turn on and off the teleporter. So each teleporter you can kind of decide to turn off. Um, and we do that so that we also have a valid way of detecting what the teleporter's channel is. So when we turn it on, uh, the teleporter uh, is spawned in. Um, I, so I, I also can't destroy this teleporter. Um, and when I turn it off, it will be deleted. So I'm not getting anything, it's, I'm not kind of cheating in a armor stand and keeping it, I guess. We, we've got, um, I'm deleting the one that I, I spawn in. So we have uh, this teleporter arrive. It's, I've, and it detects that I have uh, my first slot open, which is zero. Um, so that's what this teleporter is. It's now the zeroth landing, uh, landing pad. And if I go over to this one over here, oh, over here, we have a second one. I can turn it on and it's going to be on channel one. So now let's see it in action. So if I have zero uh, slot selected, so the first slot, it'll teleport dot me here and then I can teleport back quite easily. Uh, so uh, if I try and use it with a, a channel that isn't uh, active, it just won't do anything, um, which is nice. Um, and I haven't tested this, but it should, in theory, um, not activate. Oop. It shouldn't activate if I've if I just throw an item on or some uh, mob you know goes onto the teleporter. I guess we'll wait and see. Maybe I'll have a terrible accident with a creeper. Uh, so I'll go over to the other teleporter and I'll show you how it all works. All right, so we have, obviously we have three lines here. We have the on line. So whenever we turn on this lever, it executes this line here. We have an off line. So when we turn off the lever, it turns on this torch and it triggers this line here. And then we have the activate line, which is uh, when we actually activate this teleporter, which is this line here. And we'll build up this same module everywhere. everywhere. I did experiment with uh, stripping this down uh, to a smaller module and having a lot more of it over in the CPU. Um, but I decided that uh, I decided that I just have you know these nine blocks. I think that it's uh, quite, I guess, a powerful uh, ability to like just teleport anywhere in the game. So I figured that. It's well worth just saying, you know what, I'll just duplicate the nine command blocks. It's just, in order to construct a teleporter, you need nine command blocks. Um, I'm just going to quickly sleep. All right, so I'll take you through each of the command blocks. So uh, the online is first. So you'll see that uh, what we do is we first summon in an armor stand. 
um, two blocks above this location. Uh, we give it the teleporter name and make that name visible. And we also make it invulnerable. This is just so that it doesn't uh, get destroyed in creeper glass and also so I don't accidentally punch it out. It just means that we're not getting anything for free. We can't cheat it in or out. It's just, it's, it's used as, a, as the landing pad and that's it. We have, we then, uh, what we do is we look, uh, we store in this armor stand, um, or the armor stand that's three blocks above, we store in the teleporter uh, scoreboard, which we created, we're going to store the closest player's selected um, item slot. Uh, so that would be when I, yeah, so when I activate the le lever, it'll detect what the item slot I'm holding and it would store it against this entity. And then finally, we force load the current chunk. The reason why we do that um, is that uh, we force load the current chunk because obviously we're in the, the, the spawn chunks are over there and this is close by. So it's likely that this um, would be loaded as well. Um, but if I want to teleport far away, um, these, these entities, these armor stands won't actually be loaded. So it means that um, it can be, it means that I won't be able to detect that channel. So it would mean that I'd only ever be able to teleport to something that's in a loaded chunk. Um, so what we do is we, when we set up a teleporter, we force load that chunk. Uh, and it means that, yeah, we don't have to worry about any nonsense like that. We just, that chunk is always loaded so that we can always teleport to that teleporter. And for the off line, it's basically the reverse of that. So we'll reset the score for that armor stand. Uh, we'll then uh, delete the armor stand. We reset the score first just to make sure that all the scoreboards are cleaned up. And then we force load remove the chunk as well. Um, all right, so we have that. I should probably just check, make sure that that's not in chunk boundary. It's not, that's good. Um, otherwise it would be the wrong, the wrong chunk boundary. Anyway, um, now we have the activate line. Uh, so in this one, we will check if there's a player within two blocks of the teleporter. Uh, and we'll select the, um, what will we do here? Oh, um, we will get the, the, the selected item slot and we will store it against the player. So the, the, the teleport location, um, we'll store it against the player. So that is like the, the, you know, the location to teleport to. Um, it will then execute for each of the teleporters. It will find each of the teleporters and it will check if the current teleporters teleporter scoreboard is the same as the closest players. Uh, we, it's, it's worth pointing out that we don't ex use at, so it's actually executing at the current location of this command block. Um, and then finally, when that happens, we, we teleport the player to that armor stand. And then finally, just to add a bit of effect, uh, we, at every single teleporter, um, we run, we play, play a sound of an Enderman teleporting uh, for the closest player at that teleporter. So it does mean that if we were in a multiplayer world, someone near a teleporter would be able to hear it even if that teleporter was not the location. Eh, I am saying that that's good enough. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, it's, that's how it works and it comes over here. Um, so I'm going to uh, close off all, all this underground, make it look a little bit neater. And I'm also going to build one over in the Mesa. Okay, so we're over here in the Mesa. <laughs> I ran into some bugs with the teleporter. So you may have, um, the observant of you may have noticed that the force load command that I was trying to use um, 
this one. Uh, it only works for uh, it only works for the server owner. It doesn't work for the command blocks, uh, which is a, um, a little bit frustrating. And um, apparently, it's intentional. Uh, so it's a command in in Minecraft, but command blocks can't run the command. Um, but I found a solution to it, uh, luckily enough. Um, so, yeah, like, I, <laughs> the problem was that because this is out of loaded chunks, it meant that I could teleport to it. So uh, my solution was to use a uh, tell raw command. So basically you need to, you have to, after flicking the lever, you need to click... Um, some text on the uh, in your, in the console to kind of confirm to switch uh, chunk loading on or off. So I'll show you that now. So you can see it says to disable force chunk loading, click here. And when I click there, it unloads this chunk. Force uh, well, it marks it for uh, no longer force loading. And then when I turn this on, I have to uh, I have to click that again. And of course, I <laughs> turned it on um, in the wrong channel, so I have overrode uh, one of mine. But it should work now, so um, I just double check, click there, chunk. Yep, it's because it's already force loaded. So if I switch to this one, I'll go back here. Um, if I go to this one, I go here. If I go to this one, I go here. All right, cool. It didn't actually mess it up too much. Um, I know that it can mess it up. They can interfere if you accidentally go the wrong one. So we now have all three of these set up. Um, I also, in the meantime, had to get even more command blocks because I had run out of run out of them to make this one. Um, luckily, I only needed a a couple more. So we'll fill this in. There we go. Do I have any red sand? No, I left it back at the base. I think I left it in here. Yeah, there we go. So it's pretty, pretty nifty jumping backwards and forwards like that. Um, it should ho hopefully mean that I can really quickly get start to get things done. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that is the teleporter. Uh, it's working really well. I'm really happy with it. A little, a little bit laggy after you when you move into a chunk that uh, weren't previously loading. It's a l you get a little bit of lag there. But that is all that I have for you today. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. We had two contraptions that we built, uh, two useful contraptions. I'm going to be making use of this uh, this breeder over here, breeding up some cows and getting some leather um, to make an enchanting setup. Hopefully next episode we'll be able to get some better gear. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!